My name is Dasha Ilić. You are listening to the Ethical Journalism Network podcast with UNESCO project coordinator Adeline Ula. We will be discussing the project Building Trust in Media in Southeast Europe and Turkey that EJN is implementing together with UNESCO for four years now. We actually had the first phase in the Balkans and Turkey, and now we are implementing the second phase. So my first question to you is, why is it important to have such a project in the region plus Turkey? Why is it important to build trust in media? Good morning, Dasha, and thanks a lot for the introduction. This project is is a long history because uh, it's something we've started even like before these four years, it or the project, let's say the origins are like already like more than a decade ago. And when we started supporting press and media councils in the region uh, in order to to work on building trust in media by by also like improving, first of all, the commitment of media to professional and ethical standards. And on the other side, making sure citizens understand that they have a right to complain about the information um, they see and receive. And finally, also like um, the general idea that uh, media self-regulation has a lot of benefits for media freedom because it provides an alternative to um, also like to court proceedings, which can be very expensive and lengthy both for media, but also for, for, for anyone, for the media users. So we started working, uh, promoting media self-regulation and thereby uh, working on trust in media. And this has proved super important, even more uh, in the year that have passed by, because as you know, I think like four or five years ago uh, with the uh, emergence of new the digital media which is nothing new anymore uh, but there has been a huge crisis of trust in media and we talked about at the time of information chaos uh, and the fact that uh, people didn't know uh, where the information uh, was coming from, which information to trust or not and this was really reinforced with this uh, digital chaos. So we started really like having this new project working uh, entitled um, Building Trust in Media, generously funded by the European Commission, by the engineer. And uh, this work has been more and more relevant. Uh, and we have different type of activities, some of them that we're doing with the Ethical Journalism Network, uh, some of them with the Press and Media Councils. And eventually, I would say as well, like a lot of activities we're doing are with the universities and with authorities on uh, piloting media and information literacy within formal education. Because we believe there is a lot of work that needs to be done as well for citizens to support good traditional media and understand uh, how to debunk this information and where to find uh, the information they need to make their democratic choices. I'm very interested and I'm very glad that you mentioned that, that one of the findings was actually, one of the findings after several years was that actually we need more active, more engaged, not only media professionals, but also citizens. You mentioned that you're working with universities. Can you tell us a little bit more about the media literacy activities with citizens? Is it through tools? through guidelines, handbooks, uh, workshops, through work with the partners in the region? How does it look? Media information literacy at the moment is uh, very trendy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, everyone says it's doing media information literacy. And that's interesting because UNESCO has, has been working on media information literacy for many, many, many years. Uh, but we see like in the past five, six years, it's been a boom and a trend and, and everyone is going in that direction. I think it's very much linked to the disinformation crisis and the fact that there has been the multiplication of uh, online disinformation. And so our strategy at UNESCO is like working on media information literacy, but it has different, you have different way of doing that. And one of them is first to work with, with schools. So this is where you're working and what we're doing right now is trying to pilot um, a new um, revised uh, MIL school curricula 
uh, within um, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Albania. And we're trying to pilot it with 30 schools in both countries and see uh, at different levels, like different pupils, different uh, ages, um, and see what are the results. And based on that, trying then to expand it later on. Um, and also in other countries. So this is like a, a work that is very specific because you need to revise the curricula, you need to have the agreement of the authorities, you need also to do the to some develop some materials for the teachers training, you need to train the teachers and then you need to start doing the piloting with the teachers. And you need, of course, then to have a close look at monitoring and evaluating in order to learn something out of this piloting. This is one thing we do, but then you have the other part, which is MIL in informal, we call it like informal education. So there are a lot, lot, lot. This is where we see at the moment a lot of activities because you have media that can do media programs to, to actually inform. There could be social media campaigns. So there could be as well like uh, NGOs uh, working um, uh, on this. So this is what we see at the moment. What we are doing uh, within this project is we do it with youth organizations. Uh, because you have like um, a lot of youth organizations. And right now we've established a network of more than 30 NGOs, uh, youth organizations that are actually now committed to work on media information literacy. So they got trained and we've realized by doing that work that actually they didn't know. I mean, they knew the issues of disinformation, but it was not really obvious that as a youth organization, they could work on that. But once they get trained, they got they got actually really excited about this um, um, this possibility to to do more. So you you have to distinguish between media information literacy in the formal system and media information literacy in the informal, uh, which are a different way of doing things. But of course, both are absolutely relevant. Tell us about the, the role of the press councils in specifically in Southeast Europe. I know that you work with many of the councils in the region, but how do you see the ro their, their role and how to strengthening the influence, the position and the future work with them? We've been working quite some time uh, on promoting media self-regulation, as I mentioned at the beginning, as really like an enabler as well for media freedom. Um, so in the Southeast European Turkey, we started working first with the press council in Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is the first one that was established more than 20 years ago. And based on their, ex on their experience, uh, we've been supporting media communities like media organizations in different countries to start developing new press and media councils in each of the, of the different entities. There are different ways of doing media self-regulation that could be like, also like you have media ombudspersons, you have different possibility, but we've still been thinking that having a national mechanism, providing like a, mechan a complaint mechanism for citizens is, um, is very relevant and notably to build trust in media. What is also important is to mention that it's really key. What is really key is that the process is being owned by, by the media, not by ours. So we're just supporting, providing our support. Um, and since we've started doing that work, there has been right now, and also like not just UNESCO, but there has been, of course, like a lot of support of the international uh, community. But the press countries have been established in North Macedonia, a few years ago in Albania, but also in Serbia. You have right now, quite a few press and media councils in this region, and they're extremely relevant because first of all, they provide guidance to journalists. I think we tend to forget, for instance, right now that the digital age, for instance, has very much changed. It hasn't changed journalism, but it has changed the way journalists uh, are working, how, where they get their information, for instance, on social media. So you have now different way of, of performing your work as a journalist. And we tend to think that those, it's important that they get guidance from the media community and that there is no state interference in those guidance. So it's up to them to decide how to do it. But also like how to better protect your sources online. I mean, the, the, this work has been really, truly very important. At the moment also, like a lot of press countries in the region are working on the issue of copyright because also the issue of copyright is a, is a serious one uh, when it's possible to, for media uh, to, be, to replicate the content without permission. So this is something where the press country, for instance, in Serbia has been very active. But there are a lot of different issues. So I think they're really important in, in having this dialogue about the standards of journalism in the country. And then also like really important again uh, in providing citizens with a complaint free complaint mechanism and the possibility to seek redress 
when they believe that uh, the code of ethics has not been respected. That's great. Let's mention also the activity that Ethical Journalism Network is implementing, and that is the self-assessment uh, or so-called ethical audits that we are trying to work on with our media partners. Last year, we worked with our partners, uh, great media in Albania and Serbia, and this year we will be uh, bringing the audits to the partners in Montenegro and North Macedonia. What is the future of specifically conducting the self-assessment uh, audit, and how do you see our next steps in within the project to building trust in media? Well, I think this is like this was very interesting because this came as an additional thing we started doing together like four years ago because we started realizing like on one side the the work of press and media council of on ethical standard is very important but still it doesn't mean that you know uh, and you get like a full picture of how the media is actually uh, working and we have actually realized that this still has an impact on the way the information is produced so for instance we see, we, we've seen that in the region, it's more easy. I mean, as a simple example, if you are only having freelancers to put pressure on them so that actually uh, for them, it's harder to maybe like commit to professional and ethical standards. And so therefore the type of contract and the type of protection that those journalists are having is in fact having an impact on the way the information is being produced. And that's a simple, I mean, that's just a simple examples, but there are others and it's about who is funding, what's the, the I mean, and so one of the things that came up um, is that the transparency. Uh, is super critical. We speak at the moment quite a lot about the transparency of platforms, of social media platforms, the need to increase the transparency. I think here it's really like something about like increasing the transparency of, of media, uh, how they're working. The idea with, with this project is not to, to make it something compulsory at all, but rather something that is like on a voluntary basis because we've seen that this can increase again the trust in media and it's really like a rewarding you can um, have much more support of your audience when you are like actually much more transparent about uh, how you're working so um, I think it's hard for me to say like what is the future steps I think we need first to really see what are uh, right now the the concrete outcomes of these uh, pilotings and, and this uh, self-assessment of media that have started in Albania and in Serbia and, and that will be like continuing in, uh, in the next year. I, I would rather put the question to you. <laughs> How do you see this future? You know, like the, because it's hard to, to, it's because we are at the beginning of this uh, piloting. For me, it's very hard to already say uh, in which direction we're going. And I think as well, like it will very much depends on, on many other things that are not just uh, depending on us. Uh, there are a lot of discussions uh, at the moment about those transparency uh, requirements. So mm -hmm. uh, I would say like, Let's see. <laughs> yeah. I think one thing is uh, is for sure that we will continue to put all our efforts towards the trust and building trust in the media, not only in the Balkans, but also in Turkey. Thank you very much for being our guest, Adeline Ula, project, project coordinator from UNESCO. Thank you.